You right there, YouTube, it is Krakoon again, bringing you another gameplay, slash commentary man, y'all know how it is. We're here again, Modern Warfare 2, standard beastification, see her at the start, I'm using the gold AK silence, and as you saw there from the little screen at the beginning, well you probably didn't even notice it, but I'm playing with Crazy A Gamers, uh, go check out his channel, something like that, but anyway, this is a state, obviously, as you all know that kind of shit, this is the AK-47 silenced, and I do shit with it. Fact of the matter is, I start trying to go, I'll well, start the game by trying to run the AK silence, being one of my favourite uh, one of my favourite guns within Modern Warfare 2, and it doesn't go in my favour towards this map because essentially what the entire team are doing is going to a certain part of the map and all camping together, and being a state, there's kind of like three, uh, like three third, like there's three thirds of the map are. There's three parts of the map, you could say, right? And three, if you think about it, kind of like sectioned off. As I'm looking at it there, you've got like the lower building, then this building here, and then the boathouse, and then you've got like the uh, the aerial building or whatever it is, or like the energy station, which is pretty much on the outside of the map that never gets really used. That being said, right? I tried to go with the AK and I tried to break them out and everything like that. Break them out of the spawns and all that kind of shit. But I find it pretty difficult, I'm not going to lie. So I have to switch up my class to an M16 silenced, which is obviously... Well, you, you might not think it's a beast gun, but it is a beast gun for me. I mean, I love the M16 silenced on Modern Warfare 2. Hate it on Black Ops. I don't know why I hate it on Black Ops. Maybe it's because it takes more hits to kill it. But when it's silenced on Modern Warfare 2, it still kind of takes quite a few hits to kill. Well... You'll see anyway within this, but essentially what I'm going to show you now is how to break out of one of these situations where the entire team is all camping in one particular spot. And you'll see I have to adapt my gameplay to fucking change like and be able to destruct, I mean, be able to combat these people. And you'll see there's many, many points where I just spawn up behind, well, I flanked all the way around and essentially I've come up behind them and then... Oh, I think I switch up my class now to the M16. I come up behind them and they're literally all just huddled together, sucking each other's dick in the car and meet like little batty boys. Seriously, though, mate. Seriously, it's some fucking annoying shit. And they're just sitting behind walls with like an RPD. Then, as you just saw, but here is coming the rape train with the M16 silence, mate. And I don't know. I heard some rumors from Fistico. Well, no, not rumors. I heard some information from Fistico saying that the M16 in Modern Warfare 3 is gonna be absolutely shit. And apparently, it really desperately needs a patch because it's like the worst gun in the game. But uh, I don't know. I hope they do patch it, mate, because the M16 has kind of been a pinnacle icon within Modern Warfare games as well as just like generally within the real, you could say. So. I don't know, it's just like a very iconic weapon, you could say, even though it's like, well, no, not even, though. No. Even though it's kind of like been overused in every single kind of modern first-person shooter, it still stands the time, and it's like swapping up, and now that we know all the guns and that kind of shit for Modern Warfare 3, you know it's like that some of the assault rifles from Modern Warfare 2 aren't coming back, like, that were kind of the pinnacle in that game, so they kind of really stick to the true pinnacle so i don't know it's interesting really when you think about it like that so to kind of destroy it in modern warfare 3 by making it pretty shit would kind of be a travesty or something like that as you see here i'm just literally pitting myself up against corners well not corners like lines of sight essentially just being able to pick them off like fucking like it's absolutely nothing and just absolutely be able to rape and meet all down these sight lines with the silenced m16 and I don't know, it's beast, the M16. You see there, I put him down in one shot, but there are a few times I have to put him down in a couple of shots and all that kind of shit. But essentially, that being said about fisticuffs and like him releasing new information and everything, I was thinking about doing another COD XP talk about generally some of the downsides that I've saw of the vent after evaluating it and looking back upon it. And uh, essentially, man, I don't know, like from the get-go when Robert Boland was talking about Last Stand not being in the game, I've, well, we've now discovered that it is in the game with second chance, so... I've also seen as well something about him saying that uh, Last Stand is in the game and he said it wasn't because it's not a perk, but you've got to think about in the same retrospect when he was naming that big list of things that uh, he did actually mention shotgun secondaries, which aren't a perk either, so... Why would he still mention Last Stand saying it's not in multiplayer as if he's kind of like overselling it in a way, so... 
It's got me on the whole concept about death streaks and everything. I've never really seen a problem with death streaks because the fact of the matter is they're there to do what they're there to do. You know what I mean? If you're going on a death streak, would you rather not have the boost or would you rather like kind of continue going on the death streak? It's how you use the death streak and which death streak you particularly use that uh, can pick it off. So my personal thinking for a little quick death streak idea, yeah, they should just have either one or two death streaks, right? One is like, obviously like a juggernaut or a painkiller or something like that. Not like you get it at the start. You get it for about a matter of two seconds by like pressing down on the D-pad or something like that. And you can use it at your time because once you do that, you're more likely to use it at the right time and get off your death streak and then be able to continue on with the normal kill streak ranking up system. So that being said, that's my first idea for like a little juggernaut. The second idea would be that... Uh, I think when like when you do go on a death streak, you could obviously like the second death streak, one being like the juggernaut, the second death streak which would be activated by going up on the keypad as well, should be something as in like not as in like uh like something that gives you a lot of aid, kind of as in like maybe you get like an extra random perk or you get like a I was thinking of it as like a kinda like a question mark or something like that and you get like a random perk or you get a random piece of extra equipment. Something that's actually going to uh, literally help you get along and move on and get off your death streak and be able to kids, uh, to be able to continue on with a kill streak ranking pros progress as you usually would do. So, don't know, at the same time as that being said though, I would rather see death streaks out of the game just for the fact of if you're going on a death streak, you're going on a death streak. It happens in, some, it happens in most games, most online multiplayer games at times, so... You can't really, you can't really reward them for going on it because it happens to everybody. So essentially, you're rewarding everybody for something that always happens. So I don't know. It's kind of stupid in a way in that concept about how they maybe say, "Oh yeah, we're doing it to reward like the worst of players," but everybody does it though. So I don't know. It's kind of a stupid concept like that as well. But another quick idea I had about Death Street. I'm not really complaining about them because, as I said, I've I've stated what my opinion is about them, but. Another thing about Death Streaks is what I was saying was that when you have a Death Streak on it, it should take away a perk if it's going to be more overpowered than, like, one of your perks that you've already got. Say, for instance, you're like, when the game's been out, all that kind of shit, you fucking work out, like, there may be a little bit of an overpowered perk. The Death Streak should take away that overpowered perk if then the Death Streak is going to be more overpowered if you're going to have a load of rash Death Streaks that give you a load of different capabilities, which is kind of stupid in a way, but... I don't know, that's just my kind of thoughts on it. As you see here, uh, the rape chain's kind of winding up. My team was doing pretty shit at the time, and I was kind of shouting down the mic like, Yo, fucking finish up the game. Let me just finish with my 30 to, like, 5 or something like that. And then he ended up going 35 to 7. So, I don't know, man. It pretty much just a little wrap-up rape chain. Had to bring you out another COD gameplay. Obviously, recently, I've been doing my Dead Island Let's Play as I go on, like, a little nice tear there as well. Obviously, as well, on top of that, I'm using pretty much all non-lethal killstreaks, all low killstreaks, so it's double the beast in power. And I couldn't do I Love Gold either, so, but anyway, peace!